The Witness podcast is created by Blake Martin. This is episode 5 of 5, Wrap Up, and is made from an interview with Christopher Birnbaum. This podcast contains full spoilers for the game. It is absolutely worth it to experience it firsthand. Even if you think that you've beaten the game, there may be more mysteries to discover. This is kind of a bonus tracks episode in a lot of ways. There's a lot of stuff here of just us having fun, browsing the Witness subreddit, reading Jonathan Blow's Reddit AMA. We talked about watching other people play the game, and as the title suggests, wrap up our thoughts about the game. If you would like to be on this podcast, please contact Blake at man named Bam or myself at chrbir1. So I'm reading uh, a little bit on the Witness subreddit right now. What about? Just posts that people have made. Mm -hmm. I was thinking it might be a good idea if we find some interesting posts and talk about them. Mm. We have found the gem. This is the my jam and my gem. (laughs) (laughs) My Reddit dot com slash r slash i a m a slash jonathan blow dash whatever <laughs> gem yes <laughs> so what I'll about read it, it again how do you create a puzzle that is in that middle tier of not an easy first or second try puzzle and not a million attempts and taking a million notes how do you get the balance of the difficulty on those right And Jonathan Blow replies, I don't worry too much about difficulty. I like it when puzzles are hard sometimes, but if they are well designed, they will also be interesting if they are easy. The real thing to be careful about is that if you make a difficult puzzle, you don't put it in such a place that it blocks people from experiencing most of the rest of the game. Except in the end game, which is supposed to be a difficult linear sequence that challenges you. Do you think he... Represented that idea well in the game? Um, maybe. I don't know if, if there's, if it's really good to sort of throw caution to the wayside when it comes to difficulty. Mm-hmm. And like the game, if you know that you can walk away from puzzles, then yeah, it is open and you can go mm-hmm. anywhere and nothing like really blocks you. You only need to get seven to get to the end of the game and there's a, out of 11. Mm-hmm. So you Lasers, have to have, that is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, that's just cause like you have to have that sort of knowledge to mm-hmm. like actually beat the game. It doesn't let you get to the ending sequence without you having known that. But yeah, I think it. I think most. Um, I like how, like in, in a general design sense, I like how the island is laid out. I like how there's different like biomes mm-hmm. that are very noticeably different from each other, and the puzzles in those different biomes are noticeably different from each other. And in each one, you start with a very basic idea of what you're going to be doing in that area and the ramp up it always in every area struck me as here's the idea here is a slight like each puzzle is like a slight permutation on that idea and in that way, I feel like you don't get to the hard puzzles without scraping your way there mm-hmm. and really knowing what you're doing. And if you don't, you can always go back mm-hmm. and realize what you were doing the whole time. Yeah, and if you don't, you're probably not going to get the hard yeah. puzzle anyways. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of the really hard puzzles seemed to be the culmination of a lot of ideas. Mm-hmm. And, like, every bunker Mm -hmm. was a combination of several ideas that you had learned already. Mm -hmm. And they were some of the hardest puzzles in the game. Mm -hmm. Or, like, the the whole mountain, including the challenge, including everything leading up to the challenge, 
are all like this gauntlet of everything that you've learned mm-hmm. up to that point. The main part of the mountain, I believe, is designed so if you've only done seven lasers, you can do it no matter what. Mm-hmm. No matter what seven lasers you did. Yeah, like the only, I think it only uses the rules of separation of colors and the t- suns. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then it introduces some kind of new ideas. Oh, and the Tetris shapes. Yeah, it uses Tetris. On the bottom floor. Yes. And I think it uses some in the broken panels on the first floor when you have to take the purple path mm-hmm. around. Mm-hmm. I think there's some shapes there when it'll spin yeah, or yeah. when... I almost grids. forgot about those. Those are hard. <laughs> like, whenever whenever I think about that area, I only think of the platform. Uh-huh. Like, the walkway. The, the walkway, part. yeah. Yeah, yeah and... There's some symmetry, but like you could probably figure that out. I mean, and you're not very all likely nuance. to have played through the symmetry island yeah. already. Yeah. Um, but what if that's not one of the seven lasers that you, do, that you yeah. did? Then what? <laughs> mm-hmm. Let's think about it. I mean, what if you hadn't done Tetris? Hadn't done? I guess. There are ways that you couldn't go on. Although, if you haven't done Tetris, you couldn't do stars. Is that the case? Is that how you get there for the first time? No. Um, there are Tetris pieces in the in the stars oh, okay. yeah, place. Yeah. And there are dots and there are squares. Mm-hmm. So you have to do squares to do stars ever. Mm-hmm. This is a whole <laughs> can of worms yeah. I've opened. We're talking about the difficulty, so... Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's an open world, so we're having to consider, like, how the paths of progression might break. Mm-hmm. So, I don't think the shadows area or the audio area... Directly have, apply have any yeah. yeah. Have any bearing over what you do in inside of the mountain. Mm-hmm. I suppose... The castle area? Uh, no. Yeah, the keep... The keep is kind of a culmination of a lot of ideas and then just taking it to like Yeah. And it gives you an idea of walking on the puzzle shapes. Yeah. Hmm. So do you agree with Jonathan Blow? I in that comment? As far as my gameplay experience went, I totally agree. Mm. I totally see where his intentions line up with how I perceived the game. Mm Mm-hmm. Especially if you break it down into the smaller areas. I mean, the difficulty curve in each area is very clear. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are some that, like, stumped me in the middle, and then some that I breezed through towards the end, but I think they were more complex puzzles towards the end. I just had learned. Yeah, yeah, once you fully understand the Mm -hmm. rule. Um, That's the only way you'll be equipped to tackle some of the later puzzles. Mm Mm-hmm. There's the one puzzle where there's a ton of shapes and it's a big grid. Uh, it's one of the in the in the little bunkers like under the marsh. There's one puzzle only in one of those, mm-hmm. and it's like a big grid, and there's shapes that add up such that you know you won't use two squares of the grid, mm-hmm. but you have to figure out where mm-hmm. like a, a conglomerate shape that mm-hmm. would leave two squares out. That's how I thought about it. But it has to fit the shapes that you're given. Right. It's, and that's really complex, but it didn't take me as long as the first red puzzles up the stairs in the marsh after you cross the mm-hmm. yellow bridge. Those red puzzles took me a long time because... Yeah, even though they're significantly yeah. simpler, because that's you still learning mm-hmm. how the nuances of how all of it works. You're just learning that you can move shapes around Mm -hmm. as long as they're encapsulated within the lines. Right. And some of those were so hard for me. But now looking back, I see how clearly they communicate that really difficult idea without words, Mm -hmm. which is hard to do. (laughs) But they, I do, I think they do about as well as you can. Mm -hmm. And they start more simple and get more complex as you go. So if we were to just look at the marsh, I think what he's saying totally applies to how the game comes across, Mm -hmm. at least to me. I guess we could apply that to another area in the game. 
a lot of the difficulty seems kind of artificial, but I never felt weird about that because the whole game is artificial. Mm -hmm. The whole idea of doing puzzles is artificial, Mm -hmm. and yet they're coming from some sort of idea that's not hard to have initially. So, like, if you're on the Symmetry Island and the panels start to fail and you can't see your your second path of symmetry, that is just... I mean, the puzzles get easier in the middle as that happens, mm-hmm. but it's introducing a new idea, mm-hmm. and then it ramps back up. Mm-hmm. Um, you mean not fa- fail, you mean fade? Yeah, they, they start fading. Yeah. Um, I felt like somebody was messing with me the first time that happened. Or yeah, like yeah. <laughs> the symmetry puzzles that are like melting in the little boathouse. Yeah, and then you step back and you realize that it's the same yeah, solution. Yeah, it's the same solution On low times. graphics, yeah. that, puzz- that last one is just a garbled mess of pixels. <laughs> if I didn't know that it was the same solution. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't feel bad that someone was messing with me. It just felt like... Just as natural of a difficulty curve as... Of the rest of the things. Yeah, yeah like the the polyomino puzzles mm-hmm. getting harder seemed no different from the symmetry puzzles getting harder. Yeah, me. yeah. Like, I... It's a puzzle game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like it when it gets harder. I like it when new things are introduced that still fit all the rules I know. Mm-hmm. There's just a slightly different mm-hmm. thing happening. and. Yeah, I think in the... This might be from the no clip uh, where he said that he wanted to explore all of the possibilities that they could think of all of the permutations of this idea of drawing lines on a on a panel uh, with puzzles and stuff and he's like well I don't want people to go oh it would have been cool if they did shadows uh-huh. I want to I want it to be in the game yeah it's, it's how he described it he wanted all of the permutations of of this idea to exist on mm-hmm. the island. And that also sort of goes into back into sort of like the fourth level, the like audio logs of he wants all of the permutations of having a view on the world yeah. to be there. He wants it to be a complete package mm-hmm. in a lot of ways. Yeah. I think that kind of echoes the whole design philosophy that Jonathan Blow holds mm-hmm. of, like trying things, having a small idea, and then finding the consequences that I that idea could hold, mm-hmm. and just like I'm gonna say this phrase once again, pulling the thread mm-hmm. of what what the consequences could be, what the natural consequences of an idea could be. Yeah, um, within those constraints. Yeah. It's not like making some huge game from scratch. It's like a methodical sort of trial Mm -hmm. and then discovering nuance and consequences that just already exist Mm -hmm. from that one small idea yeah 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 i i i see that a lot in like a lot of the art that i like Mm -hmm. of like of like a lot of people go like oh it feels like i didn't write that song i plucked it out of the air sort of thing that sort of goes into a little bit of like the mystical yeah aspect as well like whether or not it's actually like a deity or whatever it's like it's letting the the form the medium that you're working in be what it is Uh uh-huh yeah based on that core idea i feel like some people like judge a songwriter that says that and they're like no you didn't you wrote that Mm -hmm. you worked hard on that but i feel like the hard work is finding the way to pluck it out Mm -hmm. finding the way to write the most natural expression of a yeah. feeling that you have. Yeah, having. it's not. It's not a no practice. Yeah. <laughs> deal. It's not like they weren't thinking, like in any capacity. Uh huh. But it's like you have to have that the knowledge of how that medium works. You have to have an understanding. If it's not like an, it doesn't have to be like an academic understanding. You don't mm-hmm. have to like know music theory, but you should have like a feel for how like chords work. Yeah. It, you know, it doesn't have to be articulable mm-hmm. in that way, but expanding on on those core ideas. And stripping away all of the other bits, like, that Spellcaster game would have been really boring. It would <laughs> yeah. have had one cool moment and the rest of it would have been lame. Yeah. But he got a crazy amount of mileage out of this one idea Yeah. by exposing it to the consequences of, of a lot itself. of other small ideas. Yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah, the consequences 
that it inherently held. Mm -hmm. So that's... And I suppose the difficulty just kind of comes from letting people experience it or being very aware of how you experience the consequences that you discover Mm -hmm. and finding a progression that makes sense Mm -hmm. um, out of those consequences. I think a lot about (laughs) the polyomino puzzles because, I don't know, it's just like the biggest section, I think, and the most like puzzle game e mm-hmm. part. It's the easiest to relate to anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got to be the most panels, right? Yeah, I'm fairly certain. There's so many. Like, there's very few panels in the monastery. There's what, ten in the there's, monastery? Yeah, there's one, two, three, four, one. five, six, seven. And the tree that you have to mm-hmm. do a that's couple it. different that's ways. That's it. That's the whole thing. Yeah. Um, so that's eight. And. Oh, and two panels to open the front doors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do those count towards your puzzle count? They do. Which is. Yeah, but yeah. it does teach you that you can look through a window. Right. And solve a puzzle. Mm-hmm. Which becomes immediately I useful. I didn't learn that <laughs> from doing it. You didn't? No. I didn't gain that knowledge. I was just like, oh, it's in the window. That was the extent of my thought about it. Draw a line. Draw a line. I, I, I didn't think that you had to look through it. I thought that... I figured out that the shapes matched up with the solution. Mm-hmm. Like, I understood that. But I, I stood in between them, and I looked yeah. at that, and I was like, all right, so it's going to be that shape. And then I turned around, and I did that. Uh-huh. Yeah. It was way harder that way. Uh-huh. Because there were multiple possible solutions as a result. Yeah. And and it knocks you back if you get it wrong. So, I still did it, though. <laughs> yeah, I, I did that, too, the first time I played. Mm-hmm. And uh, I didn't realize you could open the panels on the different sides of the, the monastery at yeah. first, either. Like, I went outside and looked and noticed, oh, it's kind of a zigzag. Mm-hmm. I'll do the opposite of that over here, I guess. Mm-hmm. And it took me a little while. But then as I watched other people play it, I was like, Oh, oh <laughs> this is not that hard. <laughs> it was way easier than I was making it. And yeah. uh, The distance between understanding exact... If you understand exactly what the problem's asking you, it should mm-hmm. be much easier to do the yeah. problems. But I was very quickly able to recognize that after playing the rest of the game and then watching someone else play it. Yeah. Um, and I think that came from just the kind of perspectives that I needed to have to finish the rest of the game. Mm-hmm. And then, like, noticing that little bits of the puzzle were broken, mm-hmm. the, the solution. Are you talking about the last monastery the puzzle? The second of the outdoor ones that you can look through the window. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. You go, and it's there are little broken pieces that would jet out and block the path, and like there are a few different solutions unless you look at the little broken pieces of wood. Mm-hmm. And I didn't notice that for a while, mm-hmm. but as soon as I did, it just like clicked, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Oh, I bet everything in this game is like that." And stuff that I had trouble with, I was probably just not noticing, totally being mindful mm-hmm. about about how I was approaching the problem, Mm -hmm. which you need to do, and it's a really good tool to have, as we've kind of discussed. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So why else do you think that you think of the polynomial puzzles a lot? Because, I don't know, it was just fun to do them, and then they were everywhere else on the island once, once I knew how to do them. I could do them everywhere else, and... There was a lot of depth and a lot of, I mean, like, the squares are great, like the colored squares that you have Mm -hmm. to separate. Those are fun. There aren't a lot, there are fewer, there are a lot, but there are fewer layers of depth to that Mm -hmm. than the shapes because you can make any shape. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, going on the windmill now, I still see shapes that I never saw within the witness, Mm -hmm. and they all act kind of a different way. Mm Mm-hmm. But once you know the basic rules, you can do any shape yeah. that you need, as long as 
they post a solvable puzzle <laughs> on, on the I wonder if, you, do you have to solve it before you so. post it? I think it's like Mario Maker. You, have you to better. Be able to beat it. Yeah. <laughs> What if there's dev strats <laughs> on the windmill? <laughs> Cheaty dev strats. Could you talk more about some of that, like, Tetris effect, or even just yeah, yeah. ways that you have found yourself thinking that you... Differently? Yeah, that you may not have thought before you played this game. Oh, yeah, like, this game, it's it's hard to convey that I'm not being hyperbolic Yeah. <laughs> um, when I'm talking about Me this too. game. <laughs> That's my struggle. <laughs> <laughs> but this, like, before I played this game, I articulably and earnestly thought that I didn't like problem solving. Mm-hmm. Matt would talk about programming, and, I would be, and he would be like, I like it because... It's fun problem solving. And I'm like, must not be for me, Mm -hmm. you know, because I don't, I'm not good at problem solving. I'm good at pattern recognition, but I'm not good at applying that. And I believed that about myself. And my my approach to papers was always antithetical to um, problem solving based mechanics. I would do everything free writing and then editing, free writing and then editing meditating on a on on something that I would read, think about it for a long time and then write the paper. Not a lot of thought going into being more meticulous or approaching it as a problem to be solved. But this game kind of broke that because you cannot float through this game. You must understand the rules or it does not let you pass. Mm-hmm. Like you cannot proceed. Um you can walk away, but you cannot proceed through that area until you understand the rule for the most part. Like, you can brute force it, but, like, that's not the point. Uh-huh. And a lot of things are in place to, to prevent, keep you from yeah. doing that. Or make it annoying. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, like, that's by far the largest takeaway that I've had uh-huh. from it, is that, like, it really changed the way that I thought about it. And it made me want to start learning programming. It made me want to go back to it and actually dig into it. And I have been a little bit. I've ran into some pro- problems with like other stuff. I am really interested in problem solving now and developing that part of myself to be better. Because I can take my whole life of basing my self-worth not around what a lot of other people do, but like all my self-worth was came from like empathy based stuff or like um understanding like intuition based Mm -hmm. understanding of things and being able to glean high high level ideas but what's really important is like having a good baseline so that i can grow quicker and more earnestly and be able to teach people better Mm -hmm. like this is sounding like i'm just describing my personality but like this is like how deeply this game struck me Mm -hmm. yeah and it also made me want to play puzzle games me too (laughs) yeah and i think at one point you said it just generally made you better at video games oh just like all. so this is like playing it again now it's not hard yeah but like i remember and you remember seeing me like going like what the hell is going on with this game this game is dumb what is happening like i don't understand i don't understand is a very common phrase stated when playing this game Uh and yeah since then it's just like it really really directly made me better at video games Mm -hmm. i would not have been able to persevere through the boss battles of hollow knight had I not known that, or like, had I not known that it took a lot of its, inf- if I, if I hadn't known that it had taken its battle mechanics influence from Dark Souls, I would have been more frustrated because it forces you to play defensively a lot mm-hmm. of the time. But like, it made me be more exploratory for every design detail. It made me think about design more. Mm-hmm. Not that I already don't, I listen to every <laughs> 99% Invisible episode that comes out. I... <laughs> Like, I, I am really into uh, consumer-level design. Mm-hmm. 
And so, like, this game really scratched that itch. But beyond that, it, like, made me appreciate games more. And it mm-hmm. made me directly better at, at doing that kind of thing. It made me better at problem solving. For sure. Yes. I can understand that. What else? Do you have any other thoughts that we haven't touched on? Yeah. I'm sure I do. We're thinking about going back to the mystery section, actually. Anything? Mindfulness. Mindfulness? So... I guess it sort of ties into that. Like, I, I think I already said it up. Like, just be me being a little bit more conscious of my own thought process of, like, a more articulable way. So, I tried to read On the Road three times. Mm-hmm. I really hated On the Road the first two times that I tried to read it. Mm-hmm. I thought it was dumb, and I thought it was, like, one of the worst books I'd ever read. It's obtuse. It was boring. It was meandering. And I talked to... to This was when I was in high school. I talked to a, a girl who was doing her AP English project on about On the Road. And she talked to me about how it was written. Which is all on one scroll of paper taped together on a typewriter huh. uh, with long sessions. Like six, seven hour long sessions while listening to jazz. And that totally changed the way that I thought about the book of like, I shouldn't treat this like Hemingway where every word is carefully chosen. Every unnecessary word has already been carved away with the hundreds of rough drafts. But this is like on the road is a jazz solo about a man's life. Once you understand that, then you understand to not meditate on every word and you sort of just fly through the book. And I totally stole that writing style. Like, even looking back on my papers, I can tell, like, I wrote this in 40 minutes. Like, in, I wrote all my papers in one sitting. Mm-hmm. Every single one of my papers in all of college. And I got, like, A's on my papers. Like, I'm a good writer, like, academically. Well, the ones that I didn't get good grades on, I didn't read the material deeply enough or I didn't edit it well enough. Everything starts with a free writing session before this game. Mm -hmm. And I thought that that was the only way that I could write. Because I thought that doing a plan and being methodical about it was dumb. (laughs) That's for people who can't write on their own. (laughs) Lamos. But this game sort of like brought me back to certain lessons in my life that I'd forgotten. Not that I hadn't learned these things before. Not that I didn't know these things before. But they brought things to... A really practical level. Like I've I've been a fan of Hemingway for a long time, and his he's really deliberate in his process and sort of the way that what I should have learned. Like when I when I was a kid and I was doing Taekwondo, I should have asked myself, why am I getting high placings in form and last place at every single sparring uh, event that I go to? Like I get first third first second third at every form like i do the forms well i have good technique and then i just get wasted i get de i get body dude like i i got beat up many times i quit uh sparring after a while Mm -hmm. because i just got fed up with it like it didn't make sense i thought that i just did the form at people and if i did it perfectly enough they would just lose (laughs) (laughs) i did not understand what adaptation meant in a fight i did not understand that you could predict your opponent well like i understood that you could do that i didn't know that that was that's what you're supposed to do Mm -hmm. and i wouldn't learn that until i got my ass beaten at smash bros tournaments and talked to people about it (laughs) And, like, this is getting into a lot of other stuff, but it all sort of ties yeah. back to this this sort of uh, Satori experience um, of, like, realizing that my pattern rec- recognition is not just good for jigsaw puzzles, and it's not just good for reading Shakespeare and philosophy, like... It doesn't just make me good at reading. It it can also be applied to make me good at other things. Like, it's not... This is not a, a single thing that I can only use in a few places. This is a general skill that I can use in all of my life. Mm. If that makes sense. Yeah, yes. Makes, yeah. <laughs> that totally makes sense. I agree. <laughs> to all. What about you, Blake? What about me? 
what do you want to how did this, this game affect, affect you affect me um it kind of fell in a time when i played a lot of games that made me think in ways that i wasn't used to thinking but this one hit me the strongest mm-hmm. and i mean on it's kind of funny that i'd call this a surface level because it's kind of one of the deeper levels in the game mm-hmm. but i started just like i i literally have a piece of paper right here that i drew on some like a, on a hotel pad and this is a puzzle that i solved in the game in a dream that i had while i was asleep mm-hmm. on a road trip mm-hmm. in a car and I was just constantly thinking about the puzzles for a long time, mm-hmm. like constantly thinking about them. And I had the Tetris effect. I was seeing, I was seeing circles and I was freaking out in the real world. That was really happening to me, but I got beyond that eventually. And what I started to notice, I kind of mentioned this earlier is I would be playing the banjo and something that would normally frustrate me. I would just look for the best way to do it and then do it. (laughs) And so it's been really good for me in a practical way. Like I, I was not so diligent before. Mm -hmm. Like I've been learning the, the, the Bill Keith melodic style of banjo for pretty much exactly as long as I've been playing the witness. Mm -hmm. I started like last December or January. Mm-hmm. Um, and like I have wanted to play melodic banjo for a long time, mm-hmm. but it's just been scary to me. It's been so foreign. But I have been thinking about it differently for the past year, and I love to solve the problem, the puzzle even, of putting together a banjo part that seems crazy, but (laughs) if I can force myself to think about it in the right way, Mm -hmm. then I can do it. Right. Um, So that's been kind of my my most practical takeaway. Um, And then I also, uh, there's one sort of parallel that exists within the game that has kind of stuck with me. So like the fact that for some people, the sound puzzles are super hard, but like the Tetris pieces are super easy. Mm-hmm. Everybody has their strengths and weaknesses in the game, and I felt that. But I also felt that way about listening to the audio logs. Mm-hmm. So I would listen to Einstein and be like, yeah, I've heard this sort of thing a lot of times, and I agree with this. This is what an atheist believes, mm-hmm. I guess, or someone who doesn't necessarily believe in the, the conventional God. Mm-hmm. But then I would hear Nicholas of Cusa and have no idea. But I started to view it like the puzzles. I was able to do all the puzzles. Some of them were harder at first. But I was able to do all of them. So I've kind of set out to try and understand all these different potentially conflicting perspectives. Because they all get at the same thing they're going for some sort of universal truth. Mm -hmm. And I've tried really, really hard to wrap my head around it um, since I started hearing these audio logs um, when I first started playing the game. And that's been kind of a battle Mm -hmm. for me. It's really hard. Mm -hmm. It's harder than any of the puzzles in the game. I'm still struggling with it. Um, Wow. But I've been exposed to so many different perspectives now that Mm -hmm. I can kind of recognize what I value in an opinion that I find to be solid. Well, that's something that gets at a universal truth. Mm -hmm. Um, trying to understand what universal truth is, Mm -hmm. even though it may not exist. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's trying to identify what it looks like more than what it is. Right. I guess. Um, so I've been pondering that for like a year now Mm -hmm. and I think it's just kind of made me 
more willing to listen to perspectives, um, more willing to try to understand why people hold the so yeah no, that's that's really powerful mm-hmm. i it's a really good thing to like have develop like mm-hmm. it's an important thing for y- your well-being yeah <laughs> um and like also being able to be empathetic towards mm-hmm. other people yeah it uh i was i was totally sure that you're going to say and i saw my banjo as a line puzzle <laughs> 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 oh no, my life is ruined. <laughs> oh no, I have to burn it. <laughs> or at least tap on it. Yeah, yeah. Try. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the audio logs for me were just like a wonderful icing on the cake that like mm-hmm. further solidified the idea of having lots of perspectives. But the videos, which have a lot more meat to them, I find a lot more challenging. Yeah, I haven't actually, <laughs> I haven't watched the Psalm yet yeah. at all. Because I kind of yeah. want to just do it when I'm at a place where I really just want to solve that last one, that last mm-hmm. problem. Yeah. That last uh, environmental. Mm-hmm. And I'll head to it till then, I guess. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a it's a doozy. As That's I've a good heard. one. Um, yeah, it's. I still don't know exactly what it's about. I mean, I know no, what it's kidding. about. I don't know. I don't know if it's trying to get a point across. I don't know. It's. I. I'm not gonna talk about it with you because you haven't seen it. But the other ones we can talk about. Yeah. Um, the the time doesn't really exist. One. I think it's. Oh man, the Joseph Anderson video. He Joseph Anderson. The he, there's the the witness is a great game that you shouldn't play. Oh video. yeah, 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 that guy. Um. Okay. He he says that that one. He's like, this is this might be an example. I don't know. The the developer might be trying to give me an example of a man who's obviously insane. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Because nobody in their right mind could possibly believe this. Do you think I have some bias here? I love that he put that line <laughs> in. Because <laughs> he's at least acknowledging his own biases. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> I I find Spyro to be so well-spoken. Yeah, yeah. And he's talking I about agree. such foreign things to me. Mm-hmm. I do not. I mean, I kind of have an idea of what he's trying to say. I don't know how it fits in my life. Yeah, it's sort of like at the edges of like philosophy itself. Uh-huh. Like that's it's he's pretty out there, uh-huh. right now, man. Like, but he pretty... knows he's such a good communicator. Yeah, he's so so clear. Mm-hmm. It's wow. <laughs> we were gonna talk about physical. You pulled your book out earlier, and yeah, I want to talk about sort of like you mentioned the solving the puzzle in your dream. Yes. I carry pocket notebooks around me, like most of the places I go. And I wrote a lot of stuff down about the harder puzzles, of like puzzles that I was struggling with in The Witness. I think that it's really interesting that of like just how helpful it is to write the solutions down. I don't know if there's like a lot to be said about it, but I think it's just a cool idea that it's so common. Mm -hmm. Like every review... Every in-depth review that I've seen, everybody talks about writing solutions down. And, like, I wrote down, like, I tried to figure out what the ending quote was. I was looking for an environmental that fit each of them, like you can see Uh there. Like, I I wrote them all out and then... (laughs) Showing me this. I was looking for, like, uh, answers, you know? And I don't know, I think that there's something powerful about it asking the game benefiting from external processing mm-hmm. besides the game and your mind yeah like how are you supposed to memorize the bunkers they're uh-huh. pieces of paper like you can't you should yeah. take a picture it's cool yeah <laughs> in the jonathan blow plays the witness mm-hmm. where he plays it with a couple bomb, of them bomb factory or yeah something. they show him that they took screenshots in the greenhouse 
and then changed the RGB settings <laughs> of the TV. Yeah. And he was like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> like, he, he appreciates that sort of external system, and, like, he, he almost encourages it in certain ways, and in other ways he kind of doesn't. Mm-hmm. And I think that, like, that specific aspect is sort of weird to me. But for the most part, it's I think it's really cool that he mm-hmm. that he he seems to really understand why people do that and like that his puzzles are really hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that I mean, it's out in the world. It's something he made, but it kind of bongs to the people who play it and experience yeah. it in so many ways. Mm-hmm. One thing, yeah, I felt bad. I don't. I I guess this is. I, I guess this comes from like being a middle school Blake and I'm playing Halo every weekend system link with my friends and so there's like a competitive nature to video games and if you do screen looking you're a cheater mm-hmm. and that's like the biggest taboo and like you, you can't do that so I just have ingrained like some ideas of what's okay and not okay to do when i'm playing video games and for some reason that kind of translated to me feeling bad for using my phone to take pictures when i was first playing the game Mm. like i got up to the top of the symmetry island and there's the puzzles where you solve one yeah and then you do the dots and then you do it reversed on the other side and i would not let myself take pictures and I don't know why, <laughs> but I eventually rose above that, and I was like, it's just a tool that I can use. Yeah. Um, I don't know why. I'm not just looking at way. the answer. Yeah. I understand what the game's I, asking me. Yeah, I understand. Me. I, I understand what problem is being presented to me, and I'm going to use the tools I have to solve it. Mm-hmm. And no one's going to be wronged if I do it this way. Yeah. And so I took pictures of all of the pieces of paper. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Yeah, I didn't have to run across the whole island. Mm-hmm. I just, I don't know. No, it's interesting. Like, I never had that sort of experience. Uh-huh. I think that I missed out a lot on a lot of what video games have to offer me, have to offer me, because I just played games and I would just look up the guides if I ever got stuck. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had no perseverance in video games because video games were not a super important part of my life. Like, I enjoy them. Majora's Mask is like was, like, very affecting to me and very important to me. But I looked up how to beat the Kanju Afi quest, whatever mm-hmm. it is. It's like a three-day long yeah. quest thing. Have you... You've played Majora's yeah, Mask. Yeah, i played it. Is that the... The couples, couple's, mask couple's Mask quest. Yeah. That one. Like, I, I couldn't figure out how to beat it. Uh-huh. I was like, I don't understand what I'm supposed to do. Um, I'm a, I must have, like, missed a line of dialogue at some point. Like, yeah. You can figure it out, but, yeah. like, I didn't. And I was a kid. And I was like, I'm just going to look it up because this is hard. <laughs> it's funny that you mention that game because, like, a phrase that's been ringing in my head all year is, like, pull the thread. And the witness has been... You find the thread, and you kind of pull it a little bit, and you might have the wrong thread sometimes. But Majora's Just Mask... Destroying the sweater, I guess. <laughs> Majora's Mask, looking back, is like this cool tapestry. Mm-hmm. It's this three-day tapestry, and if you find one thread, it's not super hard. I I, I played it at, basically as an adult, mm-hmm. so for me it wasn't super hard to... If I found a thread, just pull it for the three days. Yeah. And that is the beauty of that game to me. Mm-hmm. I loved it so much. Yeah. It's such a that. cool <laughs> idea and a cool uh-huh. mechanic. And they did it so well. Mm-hmm. I got a lot of that from The Witness. Mm-hmm. Like, on a smaller scale sometimes. Like, this puzzle looks kind of like a tree. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that has something to do with anything. <laughs> That's an idea that I could have, but I also had an idea of like, oh, this is like logic tree or what, what is yeah it? yeah some sort of logic puzzle i'm like is this some sort of weird logic math thing <laughs> but i had so many ideas like that and often i was rewarded when i thought the most mindfully 
I guess, Mm -hmm. when I thought about what I was given rather than what I thought it might be. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, abandoning what you were coming to it with and trying to figure out what the game's actually asking you. Yeah. Just, like, observe what's happening. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of clues (laughs) all around. Yeah, but you don't know there are clues yet. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Oh, man. What a... What a game. What a game. (laughs) Like, it's so... It's so fun watching people play it for the first time. Yeah, that's another thing. I I came to like a second and a third and a fourth love of this game by watching people that I cared about play it Mm -hmm. and trying to not teach them how to play the game but teach them the kinds of things that they might want to think about. Mm -hmm. And that was... <clears throat> a skill in itself just mm-hmm. like kind of keeping your mouth shut don't tell them what the don't tell them what the thingy means but just being there for them mm-hmm. so that they didn't get discouraged yeah. and kind of asking them what they were thinking through mm-hmm. all of it and by asking them what and that's they were probably thinking, the most helpful thing when you're yeah. playing it for the first time is people asking you what do you think the rule is <laughs> yeah it's a video game. It's a program. Mm-hmm. It's not going to cheat. <laughs> and, like, I didn't realize that at first, even though it's really obvious. So I just kind of was going through it, and then eventually I started to really be able to think about what I was doing. And that's kind of the beauty of it. hmm Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot wait. For Christmas, where I get to watch my dad uh-huh. play it for five minutes and then quit, <laughs> <laughs> and then I will dream about my dad if he liked puzzles. Oh, <laughs> uh, at all? Would it be bad to talk about how bad my professor for this class was at this game? <laughs> <laughs> She's the sweetest lady. She's so <laughs> nice. She's been so helpful through this whole process. Yeah, yeah. And you had her try? And she game? couldn't hold the Xbox controller. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of people... Like, my dad is really good at 2D platformers. Mm-hmm. He... When Super Mario Brothers 3 came out, he played it every day for six months with my little with my big sister. When Super Mario 64, he tried to play it. He was really excited. And he hated it. He didn't understand how the camera worked, and he mm. quit, and he never played any 3D games ever again. Mm. And so he finds 3D environments, th- digital 3D environments, to be really disconcerting mm-hmm. to this day. And so I think a lot of people sort of, like, suffer from that. Mm. From, like, be- like, people who didn't play a lot of 3D games, but even if they like video games, even if they like 2D games, 3D is such a different beast, I think. Uh-huh. If that makes sense. Yeah. It's really interesting because as I was playing through the game the first time, my mom happened to be in the room, and she helped with some of the polyomino puzzles. She was really good at them. and she came in. Yeah, she came in like halfway through. Mm -hmm. And she was really good at that. Mm -hmm. And then my dad like saw it and freaked out. He was like, oh, I don't have good spatial kind of awareness, reasoning. Yeah. I could never be good at that. Mm -hmm. It was really interesting. And then, like, I just get kind of... I feel weird because video games like this, or, I mean, a lot of video games have been pretty important to me as, like, kind of the best storytelling storytelling medium Mm -hmm. um, in a lot of cases. And it's weird to me that, like, my parents can't experience that. Mm Mm-hmm. Because they didn't play Halo 2 every weekend with their friends and get good at playing a game as a social thing Mm -hmm. in a time in their lives when doing something social was important. Right. So I kind of had that for so many years that now I don't have to think about using two control sticks to look around and walk. Yeah. And, I mean... I don't have to even like shoot or jump in this game. <laughs> I just have to find panels. And, right, right. Um, it's so funny. <laughs> yeah. um, no, I, 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 I'm gonna keep pester my dad into to actually doing it. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I'm trying to pester my aunt into doing it because she... Joan? Or no, my Aunt Barb, because yeah. she's a Buddhist, and mm-hmm. I want to know what she thinks. What she thinks of it, yeah. Of it, as a Buddhist. That's a long. Um, that's a long journey before <laughs> she'll get to the Buddhist. Parts. Yes, it is. <laughs> um, I don't even know in Buddhist. I don't think she is. She's just. Sort of, she's gonna be like, "What's this Zen bullshit?" You <laughs> <laughs> um, but she has an iPad. I think I'm gonna try and get her to play it okay. at New Year's. Okay. Um, I will give you a 10 right now. Please just buy it. <laughs> she seemed interested in it, and we have, like, some shared interests, so mm-hmm. I think she kind of trusts me on things. I'm sorry. It's fine. Uh, um, like, we were hiking in Colorado, mm-hmm. and uh, the two of us ended up together in a group, and mm-hmm. we were walking together for, like, 30, 40 minutes mm-hmm. alone. And I was telling her about this game, and then we also talked about John Mulaney and like stand up comedians that we like. And so I feel like we have a sort of kinship there. Mm-hmm. And I hope that that leads her to actually play this game. I, I've only been able to see one person play a large portion of the game from scratch, and that was Hugs, mm-hmm. like from yeah. the Hugs sc- stream. Hugs was fun to watch. Um, and like. I really enjoyed his because he his whole personality is about perseverance mm-hmm. and not asking for help. <laughs> and so like he didn't want spoilers in chat, but he would ask chat like yes or no questions if he was stuck, mm-hmm. but he was like don't tell me anything more. I just want the answer to this question. He would ask if he was like super super stuck. But he made it through the whole game. I I don't think that he found more than just, like, a few environmental puzzles. Uh-huh. But I think he found a few, and he thought that they were cool. But he didn't, like, pursue all of them. Uh, but he enjoyed the game a lot, and he got a lot out of it. It was really cool for me to experience watching somebody. Mm-hmm. Because it had it, it made me appreciate how difficult it must have been to not tell me uh-huh. when you guys first showed me the game. <laughs> yeah, And I appreciate that. Mm. I don't know if I could do this. <laughs> it's fun and hard. Yeah. I, so you guys I, laughed a lot. <laughs> I watched uh, Matt play it. Yeah. He's the first person I I was with yeah. to play it. He got really frustrated a lot of times. And he also started Starseed Pilgrim <laughs> around the same time. <laughs> and literally got so mad that he's not touched the game since. Um, and I was no, a little no, scared. I, we. He played it with me oh, when, I, when oh, I was staying with him. <laughs> <laughs> I know you were playing it, but... Um, yeah, he showed me some some of the stuff that I was stuck on. Cool. Because he had gotten further than I had. Um, but anyway, I watched him, and then I watched Nick Young play it mm-hmm. through Steam streaming a couple times. Mm-hmm. He made it kind of far. I think he was in uh, the, the Tetris Island. Mm-hmm. And I don't think he's played it since. I would mm. love to continue watching him play it. And then I watched Elizabeth play it a little bit. I watched Devin play it. I watched Molly play it a little bit. And Molly hated it. <laughs> and then I watched you play it. And it was so cool to see how all my friends think. Yeah. <laughs> I did not come... I, I hope everybody knows this. But I did not come to it from a place of judgment. Yeah, I Or negative that. judgment. Yeah, yeah. I just kind of wanted to see how my friends would think through this Mm -hmm. because it's interesting Mm -hmm. not because i wanted to know the secrets about my friends (laughs) and how dumb they are no (laughs) you guys all did really well and i just wanted to be there to watch because it was fun and to um let you know that it wasn't so scary (laughs) it wasn't so scary i also read a little bit of the book how to solve it i can't remember who the author is but it's about how to go about solving problems. Mm-hmm. And so much of it is applicable to, the to this game. Is, yeah. But also, like, half the book is about being an effective teacher mm. and how to get people to understand how to approach a problem rather than how to get people <laughs> to do a problem, mm-hmm. <laughs> to do Teach one problem. Teach a man to fish. Yeah. Like my conducting class. I can't believe I'm talking about my conducting class. But uh, <laughs> Dr. Forbes does a really good job of posing just leading enough of questions Mm -hmm. that it's based on stuff we already know and we can learn something new from exploring it in a new way. Yeah. That's, that's a really valuable kind of teaching. Mm -hmm. 
especially for that conducting class because it's all going to be future edu- educators in mm-hmm. that class and knowing how to help people help people helps people <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of cool it. yeah that's okay we're talking about real world like <laughs> <laughs> impacts that this game has had I only missed my conducting class once, and I never cried. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I did pretty well on all the labs. I just approached it like, oh, yeah, this is easier than The Witness. Or this is easier than playing the banjo. Or this is easier than cross-picking on the guitar. Um, <laughs> So I never practiced. <laughs> I did okay. I took the class a few times. I had already done my practicing. <laughs> oh, We're getting a little too honest. I don't know if this can go on the album. <laughs> yeah, it's a. Uh, I don't know. It's um. <laughs> <laughs> I have a oh song that I have to play. It uh oh man. There was somewhere where I was gonna go with that, but I can't remember what it is. That's okay. Well on that note, I guess we're done talking for the night. Unless you have anything else I wanna bring up. And that's mostly it. I think it's important to just keep in mind that uh this game isn't for everybody mm-hmm. even though it's for everybody <laughs> um yeah and everybody who really takes the time and dives all the way in uh, might find something a little bit deeper than what they might have initially thought of mm-hmm. um unless you made it all the way through this in which case We've probably overhyped it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's really good. Yeah, this is really my good. favorite game yeah, ever. This beat out Majora's Mask. First game that beat out Majora's Mask. Cool. So I love this game. And I honestly, I love Hollow Knight so much. It's so good. <laughs> <laughs> so play Hollow Knight. <laughs> All right. Here's our exit song. Thank you for listening. The Witness Podcast is created by Blake Martin. If you would like to be on this podcast, please contact Blake at mannamedbam or myself at chrbir1. One. One. One.